Hey, look at this. On December 9th at Bellator 289, live in the Mohegan Sun Arena on Showtime, the Bellator Brant Bantamweight Grand Prix advances in the semifinals, as well as the title, the interim title for the Bantamweight division is on the line, going to be defended by this man when he takes on Danny Sabatello. It's Ralphie on Stats. Super Stats. What's up, Super guys? Stats. How are What's you, man? Up, man? I'm doing good, man. Hey, I want to talk okay. about this off the break. The zero shoes. Yeah. Barefoot shoes. I tell these assholes about the barefoot <laughs> shoes. How much shit Bro, do you get for wearing them? Um, well, I get shit. Uh, I got shit on a little bit, but I got training partners and I got people like coming up to me now. That they try them. When they actually try them, they love them. So, yeah. Um, Asshole. <laughs> yeah. The, the the most comments I get is like how they look or yes. whatever. But it's like they got the wide toe box. Yeah, because yeah. they got the wide toe box. Um, but it's like it's it's beneficial for me for me and my training and um, my daily life. I feel like it's beneficial. Uh, to because I fight barefoot, um, most of my training is done barefoot, you know. So I, I just figure it's uh, more applicable for me to wear shoes that are barefoot too. So. Please, let's talk more about toe separation. Hey, toes. Hey. hey man, you you got your toes all bundled can we up talk in about this shoe. MK, Goddamn. you thank you. Can we talk about M your balls are all Free, bundled? Hey, do you, do you still wear tighty whities No, I wear. Okay, exactly. You need room for your stuff to breathe a and operate. A real yeah. man doesn't wear anything. That's why I don't wear these socks <laughs> okay. right here. All right, <laughs> or that's my ancestral tenant speaking okay. right there. Hey. Uh, hey, let's talk about this guy with the bomber MK bomber jacket, just representing out there. Okay. Oh yeah, you know. What I mean? Shout I out to Adrian well. Yanez, maybe one day. All right, that's what I'm saying. But look, look, look. We can't bury the lead. Okay, we got this man right here. Yeah. It's Danny Sabatello time. We just had him on this couch. This was one of the more memorable, fun, ridiculous builds of a fight. I've ever been a part of. We loved when you came in our studio. You fought on Ariel's show. Uh, who won? Who sold this fight better? Does Good that question. matter to you oh, entering man. this one? You know, I didn't even think about that, but I would definitely. I thought I won every exchange. You know what I mean? I guess I didn't think about the whole thing as a whole. Uh, I won every exchange we had, especially in person. Um, yeah, so I would say I won the fight. You know, I want to say that like the fight. you guys are like total opposites in so that's, many ways. And that's that's the other way, because he goes about it a different way than I go about it. You know, um, but I would say more people agree with the way that I went about it. But also, I know there's a lot of people that agree with the way he goes about it. I forgot you know? to mention it because I wasn't even thinking about it. But now that you're here, you guys were there at the Corey Anderson Nemkov, too. We were. Which was in Chicago. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did he get booed in Chicago? He got booed in his home state. <laughs> the state he was born in. The state well, that he... Fair, he's he a also, Florida man. Oh. He also tried to compliment the crowd. He also was like... Yeah, man, these beautiful cause Chicago people, I want to say that I'm going to carve this motherfucker's face up. And everybody was like, ee, 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 ee. I said like three words, when I, which I think is what like pisses him off because I only got to say like three three things or whatever. And I was like, who won't see me fuck this guy up or whatever? And everybody was like, ah! And I'm like, yeah, bro, the people in your city don't even fuck with you. Well, I feel like... <laughs> Like we always said, somebody like Anderson Silva, who never really kind of sold himself, his ability sold himself, but he kind of needed a Chael Son to bring him out. You yeah. didn't need a Danny Sabatello to, to to be charismatic. You always were, but I feel like this is the maybe yeah. the right opponent at the right time so people can see right. that in addition to the fact that you're coming the hell on, those last two victories are as good as anyone in this division has had of late. You're also kind of showing people that you're you're a fun dude. I mean, does that, that that's got to be part think, of the yeah. Plan, I right? think that's that's uh, more the story, you know. Um, close to the mic. Oh my bad. I think that's more the story. I think there's a light. There's more of a light shined on my uh, charismatic attitude, or you know, um, the way I go about stuff. You know, my my personality. You know, so which is which is good for me. So what does your family say about Danny Sabatello? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so it, it's funny. Like if I talk about my wife. My wife hates uh, all fight build up, all fight. Like she cringes at most of the things, you know, um, that that has to do with fight. So like this fight is like she won't even she won't even pay attention to anything, you know. She don't want to see any of it. But um, I know that it's like good content <laughs> for like everybody else. If she's like. Ah, I can't. No, I don't even want to watch. I'm like, oh, that's good shit, man. That's fucking perfect. Let me. <laughs> that's how I know our show's up. doing well when my wife is like, I'm not even talking about slams the laptop shut. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, when she says that type of stuff, I'm like, yeah, this is good. So, I mean, my family is. I think. Well, they they've asked me like, do you really not like him? And I'm like, yeah, no, I really, I really don't like him. Um, I'm I'm not like I won't tell them that I want him to like die or anything like that. But I really want to hurt him bad, and I've I've told my family that I. Like, I really want to, you know, hurt him and leave some lasting damage, you know, to uh, kind of teach him a lesson. But, um, yeah, I feel like they f they feel the same. They know the fight business. They they understand that this guy is kind of a, 
uh, dickhead, you know. Um, but it, I, they don't probably. I don't know if they. They probably don't like him, but it's probably no different than anybody else. All right, let's talk about him as a fighter for real for just a second. Yeah. He's not here. It's just us. Yeah. He's got some strengths. He's got some weaknesses. I asked yeah. him kind of a similar question. Let's start with the weaknesses before we get to the strengths. Okay. One of the things is that he's great at wrestling, but, mm-hmm. dude, he shoots from a mile away. Bro. He is athletic, and he does cover the distance, but I'm sure you've seen that on tape. What do you make of it? Um, so you, I also look at so how he shoots, what he uses to um, – attack the fight which is his wrestling right um but look at the opponents how many opponents have wrestling pedigree how many opponents like are used to seeing wrestling you know uh come at him i would say uh the most apt to a uh, defendant his wrestling would be uh brett johns um and he doesn't have a wrestling background you know what i mean so um for him to shoot that far him to shoot that far out on somebody who knows how to wrestle in a wrestling match that's not a good idea you know what i mean um so if you do that against somebody who has uh arguably arguably better worse uh whatever you who has a high level of wrestling experience that's just not a good idea you know and i feel like i feel like that is a weakness that's like a glaring weakness um another weakness obviously uh is how he performs while he's on bottom um in his career i've seen him on bottom maybe uh, two times and he didn't react well um, in the in the fight with Leandro Higo. He pretty much uh, uh, curled up and waited for Leandro Higo not to finish him or him to lose a round to you know come back and and be in a dominant position. So what that tells me is when he's in a bad position, he has a, he doesn't have answers. Um, another time I seen him in a bad position where I seen him on bottom of Brett Johns and, um, Brett Johns kind of had his way with him when, when he had the top position, you know, obviously I feel like he had time to like fix some of those things, but I don't think to the level that, um, I'm able to, to execute my offense. Um, and the glaring problem he has is his boring goddamn striking or his, his non-existent striking, I should say. I often say it's boring fight, but his non-existent striking. Like if you could strike, bro, you would strike. Drop. Stop telling people or stop. Okay, so I understand, like, his, uh, his, one thing I will say, he, he's smart. He's smart in the way he goes about, um, talking about fights because he doesn't want, uh, people to notice the glaring, uh, deficiency he has in striking. So he just, he just talks, talks brash and talks about how he's gonna smash somebody and beat somebody face in, beat somebody down. Um, so you don't realize, like, he only has one way to do that. Um, but yeah, his striking is obviously. But what does this fight look important. like if you stuff those takedowns consistently and this becomes, I made the comparison to the first Covington Usman fight only because you saw two wrestlers kind of decide, hey, fuck the wrestling, let's 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 throw down. If it, what, what what's that possibility like in this fight? And and I mean, did you just take over and dominate it if he can't take this fight to the ground? That's what I'm that's what I'm thinking, you know. I feel like when two wrestlers fight. You know, most of the time you have a stand-up battle. If we have a stand-up battle, me and um, Danny Sabatello is not going to be close. I'm going to demolish this kid in, on the feet if we if we have to stay on the feet, right? Um, the other thing is, I love take. I love wrestling. You know, so I'm I'm not opposed to taking him down. I'm and I see he's not very good on the ground. Mm. I'm, so. Anywhere I want to take the fight, I can take the fight, and that's why I feel like the fight isn't going to last long for him because he doesn't do well in bad positions. Okay, you're, he's good at wrestling, you're good at wrestling, but you have different wrestling games. Yep. Tell me something specific about his wrestling that's good. Um, specific, he's um, tenacious. So um, kind of like all wrestlers, like he doesn't just shoot once. He changes levels. He uh, mixes it up, and he's um, he has the cardio to keep – keep shooting um which his cardio is a is a weapon you know um yeah so so that's one thing that's dangerous like he'll shoot he'll he'll come back up he'll shoot again he'll come back up he'll shoot so he'll chain wrestle is probably what i'm looking Do to you, say uh, if uh, in terms of cardio fighting a guy who you know is like he can weaponize the cardio yeah what have what have you been doing to ha- have an answer for that um i mean i did pretty much what i've always done you know i mean i i run probably three times a week um i'm always doing like extra um, and then, you know, the one thing I've noticed, like, I've never had a problem in cardio, you know? So I need to stop, like, um, so the last fight, to be honest with you, I, 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 I kind of like, what do you call it, sandbag the first two rounds, because I thought, I thought, uh, Juan Archuleta's cardio was going to be, like, through the roof. So I, my, my idea was, like, okay, I'll sandbag the first couple rounds and then come on strong, uh, the last three. Um, but, like... That was a that's a, a misthink on, on my part, you know. I should just 
I, I'm, I've never had a problem cardio. I've never had a part in, problem out cardioing people in a fight. I've went five rounds before. It's just not been a problem for me because of the way I train. So um, I just go in there and I win every exchange. Um, and I'll be good for I'll be good for 30 minutes if I have to. I'm, he, you know, look, he talks a lot of shit and some of it is just ridiculous, but some of mm -hmm. it might be smart. He's a smart fighter and he's poised, yeah. but he brings up your age and sort of, you know, to, to dismiss you and say, this isn't an overnight success story. This guy's been around forever. He just wasn't good enough. I don't believe that because I see who you've become, but like, look, we all kind of peak or yeah. come to our, put it all, put the puzzle together at different times. Why are you here now at this age on this run? You know, when others do it, maybe at different times, what, what, what about your story got you to here? Okay, so if you look at my record, I am 18 and 1, oh, 18 and 1 professional. The only loss I have is to Marab Deficiently, um, and that was early in my career. I have fought nothing, or I have fought the best people I can fight at the time. And so I've had a long career, I've, but I've been very successful. That's why I'm here now. I've been super successful um, in my career. And I mean, this is just an attestment of like what I've accomplished. What I've been through, you know, I've been through 18 victories uh, with with only one defeat. And um, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Well, now. you make a good point. It hasn't been like it's not like six, I've seven, been eight like, losses. Yeah, exactly. I've been up. I've been down. And now I'm having a streak. This is like the end of my. No, I'm, I've been consistently successful. Um, throughout my career. You, know you feel I mean? you were avoided? Was it maybe like... Oh, no, I definitely... So, and, and this is another reason. Okay, and, and one of the reasons he's fighting me now. Now I have the belt, right? Um, a lot of people knew how good I was. Nobody wanted to fight me. Even in, okay, um, the UFC. The UFC wanted me to fight, you know what I mean? But Sean Shelby literally told me, like, hey, we're going to wait um, until we're going to give this guy... Um, a couple options. They're going to give him three options to fight. So he had three options to fight before I was getting my call, right? I was on the list. Um, but he got three options to fight, and I'm never going to be the first guy because nobody really wants to fight me, you know? Bellator gave me an opportunity, and they made people fight me pretty much, you know? So And that's why I'm on the run I'm on. Magomed, uh, Juan Archuleta, Josh Hill, Keith Lee, all, you know, uh, not we're forced to fight me, but we're like given the opportunity to fight me, and um, and I came out on top. Mm. He was sitting on a secret. Yeah. And now the secret's out. So how do things stand today with the Rufus camp? Um, so the Rufus camp, everything is like fine. We're just like in a situation where I can't necessarily train there because uh, the the Sergio mm. fight is looming. Right. Um, but like, there's no ill will, you know. Um. I, I can't do a camp there, but I'll still come there and, you know, um, they, they still, like, call me and, and, and give me pointers and, oh, okay. you know, and, yeah, I talked to Duke last week for, um, or at the Chicago event, you know, we went out, we hung out. Um, yeah, so there's no, like, ill will. There's no ill, there'll never be ill will between me and any of the coaches. Like, they're part of the reason I'm, I'm here today, you know, the uh, skills that I was able to build with them, uh, Scott Coach or Coach Scott Cushman, Sergio, Anthony, all those guys are all my brothers, you know. And even after we fight, you know, there will never be ill will. And Phil so, Brooks. And so, yeah, CM Punk, it's hilarious. Yeah, Phil Brooks, my guy. And so now in Houston, you're where specifically? Yeah, I'm with uh, Eve Edwards and Team Fight Metro. Thug Jitsu. Thug Jitsu, yeah, we're yeah. doing Thug Jitsu, which I feel like fits more of my, like <laughs> – uh, persona, some thug jitsu, but all right, yeah. All right, talk to me about Houston life. Yeah, so Houston life is um is great. That's where I was born. That's where I um uh, grew up, and um I'm I'm training with you know Adrian Yanez and Eve Edwards, uh, Matt Schnell, who just fought, um and a couple other guys are like around the Houston uh, area, a couple gyms. But so now I'm like I, I do thug jitsu, and then I do um also uh, team fight metro at O Athletic. Um, so I'm like with kind of two different teams, and I also do a jujitsu um, kind of somewhere else at uh, Travis Took's. Who, who's? Uh, Travis Took Took MMA or uh, Took MMA and jujitsu. Oh, I'm not sure I know. Took you yeah. by surprise. Took it you it certainly <laughs> did. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know what? Uh, Derek Lewis is like sort of like known as the. How do I say this? Like the He's, Houston ambassador to MMA. Yeah. He comes out with like zero music or yeah. Fat Pat. Yeah. What about you? Like, what is yeah. your? Give me like the rundown. Like the top three Houston, mu like Houston music acts. Yeah. Um. So for me right now is Tobe Wigwe. Um. Sorry, I'm a 43 year old. <laughs> Tobe Wigwe. He's a Nigerian rapper from Houston, ah, okay, Texas. Okay. Yeah. And he's like, 
He's like on the top. I'm gonna have to play some of my stuff. He's okay, like okay. the top of the list. He's uh, a trending artist right now. Um, yeah, but he's so yeah. That's my probably number one right now. Um, and then like overall, you know what I mean. It's got to be uh, zero. And then um, show some love for the ghetto boys. Then I'm gonna go uh, Mike Jones because he's from the same hood. Mike I'm Jones. From. Mike Jones, man. He has never heard still tipping. Still tipping on four foes. You ain't never heard. Right. Never right. Heard Can that. you believe no. this? Oh, yeah. That's what oh, I said. That's what I said. Get from under a rock. What have you been living? Yeah, I'm Big more like... Big boss buckle <laughs> under my Mitchell and Let's Ness. Let's go! Yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. I speak a little Houston. I know Raul Marquez. Yeah, that's true. You know what? It's funny I'm about Houston. Jay Prince. You know what's funny okay, about Houston? I went and saw Kimbo, speaking of Bellator, I saw Kimbo yeah. fight Dada 5000, which was a disaster. Yeah. But... <laughs> I have family in Houston, though, right? In Houston, in Houston. Yeah. And by the way, John Wall played for DC, and now he, where he played for the Rockets for a while. But yeah. the point I wanted to make was, I've been to Dallas. I have family in Dallas. <laughs> Don't like it. <laughs> San Antonio, I like okay. I like yeah. it okay. Yeah. I love Houston. Yeah. What is the difference between Houston, San Antonio, and Dallas? And obviously, Austin's its own thing. I mean, growing up, just obviously, Houston is always going to be better than uh, Dallas. Um, I just feel like Houston got a little more culture, you know? Um Houston also feels like more spread out. To be honest with you, I only been to Dallas um, probably two times um, because I despise that. No, uh, <laughs> just yeah, no, just because I just never been. But um, yeah, I feel like Houston is. It just feels like it's got it's got more of a culture uh, to me. Um, San Antonio's got a good culture. I will say food. the Tex Mex in San Antonio yeah. is legit. Yeah, um, I haven't really visited. Only time I've been to San Antonio is for the like Al- Alamo, like. You got love but, Houston wise for the Charlo brothers. See, speaking of Showtime here, Showtime yeah, yeah. Boxing. You, Charlo? yeah, the Charlo brothers, yeah. Jermel and Jamal, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I love Charlo brothers. Yeah, dude, they fight never... with big chips on their shoulders. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I guess I was. It's just interesting that like Houston also to me, like the the, the fighters who come out of Houston, they're more unique. A little yeah. bit, they more they stand yeah. out a little bit yeah. more. And that's why, like, I feel like uh, Houston, where the culture is kind of like a, a melting pot. You know what I mean? It's not like kind of one. Like you got your, you got a bunch of like suburbs, you know, in Houston, like all over the place. But like, if you have like city events, you know, I feel like it's more of like a melting, melting pot of uh, different cultures and you know uh, festivals from all over. Also, the culture changed a little bit when all the people like Regis Progre came oh, over yeah. from, from from California. No, well, no, um, New from the New Orleans after Katrina. True. It kind true. of brought a little bit of a different element over yeah, time that's as true. well. Yeah. It's it got, did. It, which which Dallas? That was is, living in high school. Dallas, yeah. It's Dallas true. ain't Yo, now hey, nobody go to hey, Dallas. Hey, fuck Dallas. <laughs> How about that? Straight up, Texas forever. Hey, town, let's go, uh, Rafael. We got to wrap up. It's a great talking with you. But aside yeah. from your main event fight with Danny Sabatello yeah. Friday night, Showtime, 9 p.m. Eastern. Bellator 289 only on Showtime. Uh, Petchy Mix versus your former opponent, Magomed Magomedov, is a hell of a matchup. We had Josh Thompson in here saying, as much as I love Stotts and Sabatello, Petchy Mix could win this thing too. I mean, so could Magomed. Who's coming out of the other bracket? Man, I keep going back and forth. Right now, I'm going with Petchy. Um, But, yeah, yeah, that that fight could go either way, you know. Um, I feel like, and I'm probably rooting for Petchy more because I've, I, I want to fight Patchy because I never fought Patchy and I want to clean out the division. Um, but Magomed is a tough, tough test, you know. So, um, dude, you out wrestled him. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, that, that you. That I know. I thought that, I thought you would collide Pete. like bulls and figure it out on the feet. But instead, yeah. you're like, no, I'm gonna control you on the ground. Yeah, pretty so amazing. the other thing people don't like realize about, I feel like my wrestling, my style of wrestling that I was even like when I was competing was like kind of built for MMA, you know, because. Um, I wasn't like a tie-up guy, so I'm used to shooting from space. I'm used to, um, you know, like creating angles. Like once I get in, but getting in fast and 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 being athletic in that way. Um, so like my people sleep on my wrestling. I'm a two-time national champion in uh, Division Two, but uh, I fought many, or I've I've wrestled many of national champions D1. I've wrestled many of world champions. Um, Would winning this tournament be better than winning a national title? Yeah, definitely. Not, forget the money part. I just mean oh, the... without I, the money? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Pay that man his know. money, no, please. The, uh, I feel like when I won my national champions in wrestling, that was like the first time I started like believing in myself. Um, you know, believing I was like uh, capable of great things. So like those are super special to me because, you know, yeah, because of that. Um, right now, I know I'm the best. I know I'm I'm great. You know what I mean? So... Um, and I expect nothing less to win than to win this tournament. So, 
What was your major in college? My major was organize, organized communication. The fuck is that? Organized communication was a degree. Cut promos, fucking <laughs> shit. All right. <laughs> right. It was. Ah, ah, it was. It turned out I'm using my degree. Um, <laughs> no, it was a degree I can get so I could c- continue to wrestle. I, I, <laughs> I went to uh, I went to school originally for uh, to be a doctor, and then it turned into like oh, okay, I like wrestling a little more than I thought. Um, I'm gonna be a nurse. You know, I'll be a male nurse. And then uh, eventually I started wrestling a little too much. I got, there was one year where I, I won nationals and I was like, okay, well, now that I won nationals, I don't really got to go to class, you know? I mean, what they going to do? Are they going <laughs> to the fail me? Right, yeah. class went, are they going to fail me? And that's exactly what happened. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it set me back a semester and my GPA down. And so then I uh, got a degree in organized communication to uh, work. Well, work. Now it's organized violence. So exactly. It's, 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 uh, Friday related. night, Ruffian Stotts, big fans, uh, love your spirit, your energy. Wish you a lot of luck. This should be a fun aspect. Big fight. Fun Can't wait to fight. see it. Showtime. Main event. Check it out.